I feel bad that why am I here? I was sentenced to death in 2014. So when I came here, I felt very bad for more than two years. In fact, for about six months, I'll be honest with you, I did not pray. I'm here for a case that involved, involved me and my nephew. Wondering who they are, they are men locked behind bars for different crime, with some wrongly accused of victims of circumstances, a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time, and some others just guilty as charged. Well, they are prisoners. And this is Kirikiri Prison. This month, I complete 40 years. So, I came to prison in 2014. Either I commit offense, yes, I commit offense truly. I've been in prison for four years. Uh, I got into prison in 2011, in June. I was sentenced to seven years imprisonment. One thing in prison is that it's good for someone to come to prison, but it's not good for him to stay long for those that know what they're doing. For several weeks, my crew and I planned on how to make this visit, and thankfully, one man, Ayobidemi, made this possible. Kirikiri Prison, and now called the Correctional Center, was indeed as imagined. We were given restricted access, which meant we could only film certain areas. Once the door was shut on us, it opened up another world of reality. But our mission here is to see a new form of beauty behind the bar. Generally, the mandate of the prison is to take uh, into custody, to keep safe and humane custody of those that are you know, legally interned in our prison facilities. We identify the causes of their antisocial behavior, we give them some form of treatment, uh, counseling, reformation, uh, rehabilitation, for ultimate reintegration back to the society them to become useful persons, both to themselves and uh, the larger society. I spoke to some prisoners who have found meaning, so to speak, while being behind bars. But, of course, not without the challenges. People outside there have a different perspective about prison. And it's only when you get inside here that you understand what is going on. The advantage of being in prison and there's also a disadvantage of being in prison. The unfortunate thing about being in prison is that time is taken away from you. You are no longer in control of your freedom. There's also a side of the judicial system, the Nigerian system affecting the prisoners. The legal system here is a bit very slow. And you have inmates coming into prison having there are trials going on for years. You have somebody going on through a trial for 10 years because of the system. However, the advantage of coming into prisons because some good-hearted NGO come into the prison and they take it upon themselves to really reform the prison. The reformation process in the prison, they take it up as a tax they must do to humanity. What am I going to do again in life? Since I've missed too many things, my mates are going up every day doing things, and I'm here alone in Cartes. But by the time I met Uncle, they make me to understand that it's not, our life is not end here. We have a great future ahead of us, which uh, after this place, there are some of my mates that I live out there, they will still come to me for knowledge. When I got here, um, I was faced with two decisions. Is it an end or a pause? And I took a decision. And my decision was this is not an end. This is a pause. The popular age-long adage says, nowhere like home. But what if that home is a prison? Or could that home be a prison? Or more so, could a prison ever turn a home? Uh, the case was hung for three years. 2015, I was sentenced. The case is just one count charge of stealing, which uh, naturally shouldn't have been more than one year or three years, maximum of three years. 
but the judge gave me seven years. And after about another six months, God started speaking with me that what he wanted me to learn, he will show me. And he showed me a lot of things, uh, so which I've been writing down, I've been writing books. So fortunately, I was thinking of what can I do if I live here to empower people. And out of this place of captivity, beauty is born out of hardship. These prisoners now take to painting the prison as a new form of reformation. I told myself, how can I enhance myself to end the second chance? And then um, an NGO like Heritage Anchor came. And it was all about pain production, beautifying lives, impacting lives and all. And I took advantage of it. And I learned in that set, I was the governor of the set. And invariably, I didn't just learn how to produce paints, all kinds of paints, satin, flux, text coats, emotions. I equally learned how to paint. Since 2014, I'm in prison, I've learned different, different things. But I'll tell you the facts. This paint making and painting, in fact, very fantastic. Out there, not knowing anything about painting before, but meeting them now, I have more knowledge about painting, and it's what they're imparting to my life. Not only me, so many of inmates like that, they have imparted their life about this painting. Then they taught us how to make different kind of paints. The journey here has been of mixed feelings, according to the inmates. But while their stay in prison lasts, their hope for a release soars. I'm so happy for learning all this year. And as I say, it's good for someone to come to prison to learn. But it's no good to stay long. Now, as I am now, I still have extra five years plus to spend since my judge has sentenced me. And these particular people, the people that train us for, about painting, they try a lot to consign my case for them to, to, to free me, but no way. So my own suggestion to the Nigerian government is that they will just come to do amnesty, whatever. They will not know if the person has changed or not. When I was outside the world there, I believe people came to the prison that condemned. No future for them. But when I came in here, I feel like if possible for everybody outside there to come in, it's a place to be, to learn. Different kind of counselors will come to you, different kind of uh, legal practitioners. From there, you'll be able to learn your past mistakes in order for you not to go back to do the same. So I call this place a university of learning. One man has been in the forefront to make this happen, as well as secure release for those not legally found wanting or who have served their due term. But shouldn't we be worried? They are prisoners. Why prisoners? I understand there is a great percentage of people in the prisons awaiting trials for sake of no funds, no resources, and they are suffering away there. And I just also feel I want to be a change in the society. And those people, when they go to the prisons, if they come out, they will continue to be a menace if we don't pay attention. Their relentless efforts, no doubt, is changing the hearts of the prisoners and the face of the prison environment. Anchor Heritage is an NGO that have been partnering with this prison uh, in terms of uh, giving capacity and training to our inmates uh, in terms of uh, pro bono legal services. Uh, to date, they have been able to release about 54 inmates from our custody. You know, they take up their cases, especially the indigent ones. Uh, they train our inmates, give them capacity on paint production. Like my office, the painting in my office, the painting of the perimeter wall, the gate lodge, and most of the cell blocks we have here, the paints are produced within this prison and uh, the painting is done by the inmates because of the scholarship you know, graciously given to them by Angkor Heritage. The idea of Angkor Heritage is to give legal aid. We give legal aid to those awaiting trials that deserve it. 
that the family don't have the resources for petty crimes like stealing, obtaining under false pretense, and you know, raiding, just people that actually should have no cost in the prison and they are there awaiting trial and the family cannot help because there are no resources. So that's the first pillar, Anchor Heritage, we really believe in. The second thing we do is that we empower the inmates. We empower these inmates because at the end of the day, even for those that have been sentenced and have a timeline, they will stay in the prisons. They will come out to the society and those awaiting trials will come out to the society. If they don't have anything doing, then they will go back to the crime. And you and I will definitely have problems. So what we do is that we empower them, we give them skills, we teach them how to do something when they are out so that they can be useful to themselves. And that can even help the idea of the stigmatization if they are useful to themselves. So the, the Teach and Beautify is a project that comes under the Empower Inmates uh, initiative. We're teaching and beautify. So we just say teach inmates and beautify the prisons because we're using it as an idea that, okay, let's get the prisons beautified while we teach the inmates. So the inmates will be the ones who paint the prison environment, which we've been doing for a while now. And the third thing we do is that we ensure an aftercare of when these people leave the prisons, one or two things that they can do to ensure that they have something doing and there is no sake of their going back to crime. Through their legal aid as well, some prisoners have gained release. It's a big experience, the serious experience while I was away for at least six good years. You know, my wife was pregnant when I left. I left, I left home January 13, 2013. My, my wife was pregnant of my, my baby called Divine. You know, you know that, was, that, was, that was how I left till now. I was since 2016 before we before I saw her. So by God's grace, uh, 30th of May 2019, the Court of Appeal discharged me and my and my casemate. Before I got to the prison, I did not have any handwork. But as I'm talking to you now, I am a paint producer and I am a painter. Uncle Heritage came in to teach the inmates how to make, how to produce paint, and how to paint yourself. So they came. I was among the first uh, set, the first badge that they trained. By God's grace, as I'm talking to you now, I know, I can mention, I, I, I know some, some paints. As we're talking, it was through the, the course that I know what we call test coat paint. We know, I know what we call uh, flesh coat paint. I know what we call uh, emotion, gloss, oil paints and all that. With that now, I can stand confidently to make some paints myself. Although AY is out of the prison, the reality is that more persons are behind bars because according to the figures provided by a global prison data organization called World Prison Brief, awaiting trial inmates in Nigerian prisons has risen from 62% in 2000 to nearly 70%. The total prison population in 2000 stood at 44,450 prisoners, but it has risen to 73,248 by May of 2019. Indeed, there remains an urgent need for help and empowerment for these prisoners.